Hi, this is Eric. So welcome to another Tip Tuesday. Today is going to be a very quick one. So I thought to share about painting small figures. I already had a video on that, going to a little bit more detail, but as more of an individual figure rather than a group of them. So I am taking Andy Evenson's online course and one of the module he's talking about painting a group of figures. So I figure, oh, I haven't really talked about that before. So of course I take a few pointers from him, but I think I can kind of share it with you. Uh, of course, this is going to be how I do it. Not everybody's going to be the same, but anyways, we'll just use this photo as a reference first. So, First thing that you need to understand is that we need a eye level. Okay, so let's say this is your eye level. And if you are on the same level as everybody else, you guys are all sharing the same eye level. So unless somebody is really, really high or really, really short, like a child, then almost everybody is going to be around the same eye level. So let's say we got this guy here. Okay. That is our main figure. So he's a big dude. He's like a, he has a big torso. And okay, so again, we start with the head, the shoulder, and we just treat the body as a big shape and the leg, okay. the basic proportion, usually seven and a half head, depends on where you're going, but that's mostly the general proportion in a painting now. Look how I draw the head. It's more like a you know, rectangle rather than an oval or a circle. Definitely don't do a circle. I mean, nobody look like a circle unless you are drawing Charlie Brown. Okay, so on the side, he has his girlfriend or his wife, whoever it is. Her hand is going around and the leg as well, she's walking. Okay, so the hand is going to be really complicated. We don't really need to see her hand, so they're going to join shape like these. Okay, so let's just paint these two figures first. So I'm going to make it very, very simple. So we usually start with the skin tone. So it's kind of like a combination of cadmium red and orange and I can I use a little bit of dirty paint on my palette just to neutralize that a little bit and we don't need it to make it we don't need to make it really saturated right now so okay so here we go we got a figure here and a figure here I usually like to start with the skin tone and okay there's a hand here okay Get some nice decisive brush stroke, okay? Don't dab around too much. And the guy is wearing kind of like a gray, cool gray shirt. So I'm just gonna grab some of the colors here. I might actually add a little bit of a neutral tint, but somewhat transparent. And don't make it too wet though, okay? You don't want a very wet paint right now. Okay? So it's just, Connect the shape, join that. Don't worry about if the color blend into each other. It doesn't really matter. We just want to look at it as a single shape right here. Okay, and go down to his gin. His gin, I'll grab some more, forgot to spray the paint. I'll grab a little bit of cobalt blue. Again, very, very simple. I'm gonna grab some other colors. It's a little bit too pure. Okay. Another stroke for the feet. Okay. And her partner, his partner, he's just wearing black. So I'm just gonna grab whatever color that is there and just paint that in. Again, not too much water. Remember to dry your brush a little bit on the paper, on the on the towel, the rag, towel, whatever it is. Okay. Make sure to 
to make it a little bit darker. Feet. Okay, you can lose the feet. A lot of artists don't like to draw feet because that feels like it's anchoring down the the person, and it doesn't feel like they're moving. So I can grab some just neutral tint, cobalt black, paint some hair in. Her head is on the side, so we see a little bit back of her hair. Okay, and that's it. And we can add some shadow. I'm not even gonna bother too much about the color. I'm just going to, shadow seem like, it's kind of like an overcast day. I think the shadow's very soft, but let's just do this. Okay, and join, join your shadow together actually. Here we have two figures. Usually when you paint a group of figures, you want a few very defined figures and other figures in the back, you can just make them very, very loose and very suggestive because this two figure is going to suggest that it's a group of figures when they have similar visual language. So here, let me just paint. I'm just going to paint in a single color. You know, like a like a warm gray of some sort. Okay, this is not a color lesson, so I'm not big on color in this one. Okay, so it makes a color, and then there's the figures on the back, and if we want to separate this two, the value is going to separate, but we can leave just a little bit of gap here. That's what I like to do, and. You know, here just then we got another figure in the back, okay. and maybe some shadows as well. And on the side here, okay, we can just have some more blob, whatever. You know, just very simple. A stroke, two stroke. Okay, there's a body. It's a shoulder and two feet. Okay. And maybe we can have some somebody very far away. So something like that. Just there's some dash, some, some some blob shape. And they all have a little bit of a cast shadow here and there. So you got here, I got a group of people. Right? Sometime when you are Sometimes when I'm painting a, let's say, a rainy scene, this is sort of like a bonus here. Okay, so if we have a raining scene, we got a person you know, just sort of walking. Body, two legs. Very, very simple, and then that person holding an umbrella. See, even if we don't give it too much detail, it should still look believable. Okay, so here's the, the head. Let me cut the umbrella in just a little bit. We just need to leave a little bit of gap here and there just for separations, but we don't need to separate everything, okay? So here we go, so figure and give it a little bit of blue jean or whatever. Again, not a color demo, so something very, very simple. Okay. Here guy, okay? I don't, I don't know where his hand's at, something here holding an umbrella. Okay, so here we got a figure in the rain. And, you know, I can add a little bit of water, add a little bit of reflection. Okay. So, something like that. Okay, very, very simple. Now, 
we have some figures in the back. So what we can do is we can simply maybe we'll add another umbrella that's a little bit that's behind him and another body, some feet. It's the same thing. And here we just two we just do two feet here. Whatever. Some some blobs of paint and suggestions. Again, in the context of this figure, you're going to read the shapes behind as a repeating element of what you see in the front. And that's the power, again, that's the power of visual language. You don't need to paint every single detail. You give them a few, you give them a few a little bit more descriptive informations and a lot of time people will fill in the rest of the blank themselves. You don't need to give out every single detail, right? When you give them these, this guy here, and all this, I mean, if you look at this kind of separately, if you don't look at that, that doesn't look like anything. But because of this figure, everything else starts to work together and it becomes a figure in the rain, group of figure wearing umbrellas in the rain. Same thing here. We got these two couples walking. And maybe in this one, you can tell somewhat of a figure, but definitely not this guy. Like, they, wh wh what are they? I don't even know what they are. But because of this two figure in context, this suggests you there's a group of figure. So everything else behind when you read you're gonna see them as figures. This works, the same concept works for like a barn painting with a bunch of cows, sheep, horse, whatever it is, but that's the power of visual language. And when you look at this, you're going to see a group of figures. And sometimes if there's a dark buildings in the back, you might not even need to see the face and stuff. And that still work. A lot of this two stroke, they're just feet. So, they're just leg and feet. So hopefully this is helpful. It's a very quick one today. I'm quite busy this week. I'm still hoping to get the water lesson out this week, but I am not sure. So anyways, hope you have a wonderful day. Stay safe and healthy, and I will see you guys next time.